Hi, I'm Jeff Frawley. And I'm Mark Keating. And you're watching Learberg TV. Today, we're at Red Star Kennels, and we're gonna be working with Mark on doing a collar grab with one of his dogs here. We're going to, uh, from our relationship games course in DVD, we had an exercise in there called uh, Accept Restraint, which was uh, kind of priming the dog for things like nail trims and stuff like that. Well, one problem we encounter quite a bit here at our boarding kennel is when we have to grab a dog by the collar and move them from kennel to kennel or so on and so forth, some dogs have a really big problem with this. And the dog that we're going to be using today, Shiloh, had a little accident at home where she was in a high state of drive and someone had grabbed her collar and she had actually bitten that person. So we started working our accept restraint, uh, particularly with the collar. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you the five steps needed to develop this behavior from the first step to the fifth step and get you on your way. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, you're going to need a system of reward, which if you've been watching uh, all of our Learberg videos, you're going to see that we use marker training. So today I'm going to be using a clicker, okay? And what we're going to do, step number one, is we're going to work, or we're not going to actually grab the collar, but more work around the collar, touching the dog, and marking and rewarding accordingly, okay? So you're going to see me reach around, click, that means she's doing the right thing. Give her some, a good food reward. Notice I'm going to give her multiple pieces of food to make, it, to make the reward even more valuable. I'm going to do the same thing. Around the collar, touch, click, food. Now if you watch the behavior of the dog, remember this is a dog who is very uncomfortable with this. And you can see when my hands come down, her behavior changes to a point of... Uh, She's a little bit unsure, but she's accepting it, and she's trying to kind of uh, internalize what's going on. So there we are again. All right. So again, I'm going to reach down around where the collar is. You can massage a little, and then you're going to click. Now, if you're going to be using a verbal mark instead, you can simply, if you say, let's say yes or okay, I also have a verbal mark with her and it's okay, so I'll use my verbal mark and do the same thing. Touch her around. Okay. Good girl. You can see she, when she hears her mark, she's excited and, and knows that this, she's on the right track. Step number two is we're actually going to make contact with the collar. We're not going to put any tension, but we're actually going to make contact with the collar. Okay. So you see what I did there? I just actually grabbed the collar and reward it accordingly. So there I am again. You can always prime the dog up by petting her a little bit before you actually grab the collar. Okay. Girl. Baby stepping all the way there. Good. And do the same thing. Okay. Again, step number two. You can kind of see the dog when I grab her collar, she freezes. And that it falls within our, okay, except for strength. Now, step number three is going to be we're actually going to make a little tension in the collar, just subtly, so she can feel that. And of course, we're going to mark and reward at the precise moment. So here we go, a little priming with the petting. You're reaching in, you're grabbing. OK. And I pull back a little bit. In this case, I can pull back away from her towards her backside. Girl, and again. OK. So we're not actually moving the dog yet. We're still at step number three, which is getting her used to feeling that uh, the, the tension in the collar and also having her hand in such a close proximity to her face. So again, I can prime her up. I'm still at step number three. OK. OK, now we're at step number four. Now notice when I was pulling on the collar, I'm pulling back. OK. Well, normally when we're pulling a dog, or sorry, moving a dog with a collar, we're usually moving the collar this way, which is going to mean that the tension is going to be not going this direction, backwards, but actually going up and over their head. So now I'm going to do that. OK. See what I mean? So instead of pulling it back, I'm pulling it towards me. So you can prime her up again with a little petting if you like. Grab the collar. Okay. Good girl. Okay, again, step number four. 
With each one of these five steps, you can take weeks for each step. It just depends on the dog you're working with and how fast they're moving. Like I said, she had an issue, and I've been working on this for a while. So, okay, priming her up with a little petting. Here's the collar. Okay. Okay, and now we're at step number five, which is actually physically moving the dog. So what we're going to do now is we're going to grab the collar in the way as, same way as step number four, where we're pulling it towards us, and we're going to try and physically move the dog. All I'm going to ask is literally an inch or two inches of movement, and when I get that, I'm going to mark and reward accordingly. Okay? Here we go. Hi. Primer up with a little bit of petting. It's fine. In this case, you can also reposition your body so you're in a different... Uh, you know, place in relation to the dog. I'm not right here. Now I'm at the side. So now I'm going to actually, okay, move her. And what's happening because of the work that I've been doing with her, she's already going along with that, uh, we'll call it leash pressure, collar pressure. Okay. So here I am again. Okay. You see what I mean? So it's just baby stepping. I'm not going to try and drag her across the room right now or anything. I just want to get her used to being moved by the collar and have her association with this be uh, an association of reward, okay? Not uh, correction or anything uncomfortable. So that's why it is very important that you take your time with every one of these steps. Here we go again. Okay. Good girl. Do it again over here. Oops. There you go. Okay. Good girl. There you have it. Okay, everybody. Uh, one thing that I do that I've learned is I really do enjoy working with the clicker. I use it for duration, so I don't release so much with it. But one thing I do is I hold it in my hand like this and click it with my ring finger. The reason is that allows these finger fingers to be free. So I can easily grab for food, okay? If I need to grab the leash and manipulate with the leash, I can do that. I don't like to hold it like this and click it with my thumb because that negates all of my other fingers, okay? So if I put it in here, click it with my ring finger, I can even, I can have, like I said, I can have the leash in the same hand. Even if I'm working with electrics, if you guys use electric collars, I can hold, can you throw me a remote real quick? I can hold, uh, for some of us who are doing more advanced training or we have some kind of things that we need an electric collar for, I can hold an electric collar like this there in my hand and I can put the clicker in here. This, is, this collar is off. It's not on right now. See? So I can click and use my thumb to hit the button. See what I mean? So that's why I really do prefer to have the clicker in my hand like this using my ring finger. So I have these, these fingers available for whatever I need them for.